All right. And we're on. <laughs> My friend, it's really a huge honor. Um, I'm a myth. Um, I discovered you guys a few months ago. I'm in love with the band and the new records. But first of all, who the hell are you? <laughs> My name is Clay. I play bass and joystick. I also co-write with the, the vocalist Duck. Um, been in the band since the start. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just a bass player and band mom, basically. Yeah. Clay, welcome to the show. Um, for people in Quebec that don't know the project, how the band started up, how that crazy ID started up, how you guys met? So, well, Duck used to be in a. I was a he, Duck used to be in a band called Detonate, um, uh, and I was a fan of that band. Uh, but he lived in texas which um is the state right next to louisiana and uh uh he randomly out of the blue moved to new orleans and uh me and my buddy garrett who's the original drummer um we were playing in a worse band and someone gave uh him our numbers and he hit us up he's like i want to start a band i just moved to new orleans and it's been that ever since yeah, yeah. um Back in 2009, it's crazy. It's crazy it's been oh, that wow. long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, what I love about New Orleans and Mississippi is uh, it's such a cultural, musical, you know, piece of art there. It's beautiful. There's so much stuff involved, so much style. Um, so did, did that influence you a lot? Because... Um, I really think it's a really original project. You know, you guys uh, uh, do it your own way, and it's different from what it uh, have been done in the Scotty. Well, thank you. First off, thank you very much. That means a lot. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I think it's uh, kind of. I mean, I've just been around it my whole life, so <laughs> New Orleans definitely has. Like, I've, I've just been around live music my whole life, so that's hearing brass bands and uh any kind of uh jazz music um and then i got into punk rock you know in my early teens pre-teens so it, it just it then finding out what's my first record i got was green day dookie but my second record that i got my buddy burned me less than jake borders and boundaries and that was like my first first uh introduction to ska that that where i knew it was ska like there was obviously some things some records that were around that i knew about but i just didn't know what it was you know um and then and then from there when i started playing music we just kind of gravitated towards that um and then kind of created the new orleans thing that i've had you know that i've grown up around into yeah songwriting uh, it's cool because, you know, I was a metalhead in high school. Really? And all my friends were into punk rock and ska yeah. and everything. And at first, I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> I wasn't too metal. I was discovering band. That was my own world. But when I went to party, <laughs> like everybody were playing. So I, I, I started to listening to band. And the first um, CD, I not a CD I got, but the first cassette I've got was Garmouth, Pool and Cheapy. Mm. And one of my friends was so tired of hearing that records in my house that he said, I'm going to, you know, rip you off like uh, Losing Strike and Passport from Less Than Jake. So it was uh, it was my start, you know, yeah. the first three okay. albums I listened to a lot and get into it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that record still means a whole lot to me. Borders and Boundaries brings back very, very early memories. But yeah. So um, when you started up, how was the scene in in New Orleans in two thousand nine? Oh, it was incredible. Honestly, it was kind of the tail end of like the peak of the New Orleans ska punk scene. Um, there were bands like Fatter Than Albert, um, Angry Banana. Um, those were the two biggest ones. Um, There's a band called Samurai Deli. Um, and then there was, uh, 
a band called Stereohype from Mississippi. I'm trying to think of all the main bands from the New Orleans ska scene that every show was just packed. And I was in a band called The After School Special, and we would just open for all those shows. Uh, and I mean, that was they were still great, but we were just a terrible band. Um, so, but uh, the shows were incredible. Honestly, w- what started the decline was the death of all the all age venues. But for Joystick, we were in like the like glory days of the ska scene in New Orleans for like two years. I think it really started dropping off after 2011, 2012. Um, and it, it, like people still come to shows, it's just not as thriving as it used to be. You can't play like you used to be able to play as many shows as you wanted back then. You can't do that anymore. You got to play like once every few months. You know that that that's speaking of when shows were happening, but you know, uh, you'd had to play like once a quarter. Um, so things are things are good, and especially because we have bad operation now. We were like the only ska band for about five years in New Orleans. We were holding yeah, for a while. We I a was looking in this thing like, man, they held this scene for five years. That's crazy when you think about it. I think it was 2000 and like third. I mean, honestly, it was like 2013. It was longer than five years. 2013 to 2020, because that's when Bad Operation started showing up. And they haven't even played a show yet. So we haven't even had the first ska show back. And we also have Flying Raccoon Suit down here. Um, they're from Mississippi. Our trombone player is the guitarist of that band. And they we have three active touring ska bands in the area now. So things are looking up. Uh, we just got to start getting some shows back, you know? Uh, I am happy to have bad operation now though because that that first show where joystick and bad operation play together is going to be nuts um yeah i don't know if you felt that during the quarantine people were kind of starting of listening more music and start to be aware of what's happening around them not just the fans of the scene you know because before the pandemic I, i'm sure it's, it's the same in, in mississippi it's the same people when you go to constantly to show it's the same people and yeah um you realize the scene is kind of small after all but yeah. uh, i think that there's gonna be way more people um the curious one's gonna be there this time because everything stopped and you know when you lose something or even if you don't attempt it it's just like oh i can't do that anymore i want to go there now that i can't i think it's it's going to be a, um, a special thing when fair started up again. Yeah, I, I, I hope that that is a thing. <laughs> uh, I, I think it will, like, a lot of people have discovered us this year. So that's really cool. Um, at this point, I feel like way more people listen to us outside of New Orleans than in New Orleans at this point. You know, which is cool. I like that. But um, I'm really interested to see how some New Orleans shows turn out after all this passes yeah um, nobody in new orleans chant back everywhere else in the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah uh yeah we are we just announced that we're playing fest so we finally officially have um a show booked so it, it feels good. It's just a little ways away from now, and I think we'll probably play a show sooner than that, but the fact that one is booked still feels great. Yeah, yeah. In the U.S., um, it started up slowly again. I saw in New York um, the kind of small festival outside with Mad Bowl, and yeah. it seemed that, you know, there's no um, raising case of or anything. And uh, I spoke with Ben in... Um, uh, in Florida, and and things are started up slowly again. So yeah, I'm 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 naive. I must mention I'm really naive person, but uh, <laughs> I think that in a couple of months, yeah, show's gonna start it back. It's gonna be slow for the rest of the year, but next year's yeah. Next year, I feel like it'll be full swing. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy, man. Yeah, I can't wait. God. And- you know, you guys have so much energy, and you're a live band. So, man, it's got to blow up. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we have a lot of energy when we play live, so, um, get ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're always a band that toured every year and we had van troubles, um, after our last tour in 2018. And we said, Oh, we'll just take a we'll just take a year. We'll just take 2019 off, and that would just turn out to be a huge mistake because then oh. 2020 didn't happen, and now we're in 2021. You know, so yeah, I, I miss touring so much. Yeah, yeah, we all miss show, and you know, I always said that you guys are therapists because <laughs> <laughs> you know, without shows and anything, we're so like desperate. We're so you know, mentally down that we realize, you know, we're addicted to see band live and it brings so much. So yeah, yeah, I miss that too a lot. So it must be weird to release the record um and not touring. Yeah. Um it wasn't on purpose. It it, it lined up. <laughs> we didn't go into the studio until um until the first like literally the first uh like three days of shutdown it was uh I, we had that we had the dates booked for like two months and then all of a sudden everything started going to shit and we're like we're like shit we still gotta show up yeah we were like ah so we like left our houses and it, it was it felt like we were it felt like we were breaking the law which maybe we technically were i don't know but uh we we showed up to the studio and uh we got rhythm section done we basically camped out at the studio for three days and got most of the rhythm section done and then when it comes to the rest of the record we we did it in shifts uh duck and i were at every session but we would go in with like a horn player or like so it would be like three of us going or it would just meet be me and duck and then duck would record vocals and we would do it like we would chip away at it once a week um slowly but surely And then we sat on it for a few months. So, but I was, we were not, we were not, we were, if, if we didn't have a record written before shutdown, I don't know what, how I would be right now. I, I, I would probably be in very bad spirits right now, to be yeah. honest. It I definitely feel insane. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, people have more time. So, you know, um, What I've had, the comments I had, it was like, thank you guys. It's such, you know, uh, a good record. It makes me feel good. You know, I listen to it a lot. So, yeah, man, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a weird time and it's weird to release a record in those conditions. But at the end, people are there and they listen to it. So I'm sure you're going to be surprised and people are going to sing the song and know them. <laughs> you know, I've been... Like, you know, not to say that people haven't sang, or sang along to our songs in the past, but I I still <laughs> be, feel like this record will get us there, you know. <laughs> we have like, songs that people sing along to, but <laughs> we, we, Duck also sings really fast, so that's a thing. But um, yeah, I can't wait to play these songs. We're going to play like a, a good chunk of it at Fest for sure. At least like six songs can't wait and it, it's crazy man to camp like three days and rush yourself doing it because the result is amazing we didn't felt like listen to it that it was rush or anything it was um really well construct and you know every song you don't skip one it's the whole thing you know thank you that that means a lot yeah i i i, I was the one who made the order of the album <laughs> At this point, I'm pretty proud of it. I really like the way it flows. Yeah. Like, the album kind of changes as it goes along. You know, by the end, it's like a different feeling record than it is at the beginning. So thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, because the order is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of balanced the records uh, when it came to fast, slowing down, and then getting fast again and everything. So... Yeah, yeah it, it, it's not easy because you're so involved in it. So it's like in movie when you film something and you put an object there and there you 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 change the position and then you don't realize it because you're so stuck to see that again. So it's tough to have a step, you know, ahead. Yeah. 
absolutely. I mean, I, I, I sat there and looked at the tracks. I, I made like three different orders of the record. <laughs> and, and that's the one I, I, I stuck with. But there were all kinds of different crazy changes. Uh, yeah. Um, the album is available on Stomp Records. Um, it's cool because Stomp Records always uh, been pushing ska band for many, many, many years. And not just ska bands, but, you know, I love the label. Uh, how, how did you heard about the label? Oh, yeah, I, lo I love Stomp Records. Um, so our drummer, our touring drummer, Dante, uh, he... Uh, he, 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 he used to be our full-time drummer and he left the band to start tour managing for a band called Pears. They're from New Orleans as well. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. And I met him. I think he was at the Pooza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He, he told me to write him um, and I didn't. And because I forgot his email, I didn't have anything yeah. to write him at my phone on me. So it's my bad. Yeah, well, he, um, well, he, he was like... <laughs> tour manager for them early on he's the guy with like long red hair if you saw some of our music videos you would know who he is if you saw him um he uh well he left joystick to become a tour manager and he basically i mean he's tour manager of less than jake now so he's killing it um but anyway he was just met so many people and he met the people at stomp and it just kind of it just kind of worked out perfectly because we had sincerely finished our last record and we just sent it to Dante to show it to him. It wasn't like, hey, show this to Stomp. He just happened to be in Canada when we sent it to him. And uh, he was like, oh, my God, this is really good. You guys fucking killed it. And then he showed it to them and they were like, let's put this out. Uh, it was it was that casual. They were like, oh, this is amazing. Let's put this out. Like that was it. And then it happened. <laughs> so. I, I still haven't I still haven't met Mike or Matt. You know, we, we we've been we've been uh, in contact with each other for over four years now. Wow! So hopefully, once this ends, we will actually finally be able to meet in person because we've talked, you know, for years, just never met in person. Uh, and then the record was also released on Bad Time Records uh, in um, out of California. It was a duo release, so. Um, yeah, really, really uh, cool collaboration. Yeah, and we hope to see you around. I have a feeling that Poods all something like that. Oh, oh, well, we were we were gonna do that, you know, probably in whatever twenty twenty was. You know, we were gonna do that. That was gonna be the year where we met them. <laughs> so. But God damn it, it didn't happen. But I, it, they're such cool and sincere people. Oh, dude, I know. I mean, I, I were... after as a, as you know and. I know them. I work with them since more than twenty years, twelve years. Sorry, uh, that I'm doing the radio show. So yeah, there, there's, you know, that label. They, they should have, have way more, you know. And it's not easy to run a record those days, but they're still doing it. And yeah, you know, they've been doing it for so long. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I like the I like the music they've been putting out. Um, uh. I really liked that rules record that came out. I really liked. Um, yeah, I listened to it. Yeah, I liked. Uh, I liked the Boyd's a lot. I liked. Uh, um, trying to think of the other one that came out. Um, there were Bike Thieves, uh, and then there was uh, We Hate You, Please Die. That's a. Pr I, I've been listening to them a lot lately. Actually, they're really cool. Um, I'm excited about their records. I, I like. I like the variety that they have. I think they released the new uh, Danny Rebel and the uh, KGB. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Root City Riot too. Oh, and uh, Root City Riot. Yep, Root City Riot. See, it's just it, it's it's been a crazy couple of months. My yeah. Mind, very scrambled. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so cool, you know, because I felt that there's a kind of nostalgia just before the pandemic. A lot of people are coming back in the scene. Um, you see like a lot of band reunited and there was way more festivals. So, uh, yeah, things are going really great in the punk rock scene and discussing, I think. Yeah, dude, it, it's crazy how much um, hype there is around Scott. Because I've been, I mean, you know, 
I mean, there's a lot of people who have been doing it longer than me, but I've, the, as long as I've been in, I was all, I, I've stuck by the uncool genre for so long, and to see it get <laughs> positivity for a change is wild. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because there's a lot of joke about ska, but I'm a huge ska fan, and, you know, I'm doing the radio show for many years, and I always said, you know, guys, even if you think that ska is a thing that, it's it's always coming back. Music is a wheel. And, you know, um, I think what happened with the Interrupters is, uh, was the boom. The, there's always a band that just explodes and every band around is just starting to get, you know, level up and everything. So I think that's what happened with the Interrupters. And yeah, it definitely. It brings back the sky and the radio. People are ready yeah. to more. So, yeah. And yeah, it's hearing- a... Interrupters on the radio in 2018 was pretty crazy. Yeah, I remember that. It was awesome. <laughs> like, I would just hear it out and about. Like, on, yeah. you know, damn, all right, a new, it's not like it's Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, the impression that I get. You know, it, it was like a new single that's on the radio. I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones just released a great record. So, yeah, yeah. So I- I've only listened to a few songs. I need I need to sit down and listen to it. I got to do that. I really liked this this the uh, the title track. The title <laughs> track really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it seemed like everybody in this casting was involved in the song. <laughs> there are so many people. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, that one's crazy. Yes, with the all the the eight minute one. Yeah. yeah you're talking about yeah that. <laughs> talking about that but I, are you talking about the other single okay yeah i'm talking about the one that's the the title track of the record the one that i think uh it's the one when god was great or whatever like the actual song that's called that yeah but the the one that's long yeah there's like, like <laughs> 30 people in that song or something <laughs> yeah but you know sky is is you know, a music that brings a lot of sunshine. Even the darkest car records, you know, it just it's a music that is really festive and people connect with that. So yeah, with um with the relief that's gonna be when everything ends and get back to a kind of normal, uh, I think that's the kind of soundtrack people are gonna pick up. Yeah. Um and fast car. <laughs> <laughs> we uh uh, yeah, I, uh, sh- sorry, I forgot, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, what's the best way to directly encourage you guys? Uh, is there merch? Um, how we can get the CDs? Is there the whole CDs? So the best, so the best way to support us is to, we, we still have some vinyl for sale. Um, we have, uh. Stomp has the beer vinyl, which is the most people who are going to hear this. Um, we have the beer variant from Stomp. I'm still, sh- I'm sure that there are some copies left. Um, if you're in the states, order it from Bad Time Record. There's some Oxblood uh, variants left. As for our merch, we're, we're, we're uh, I like it. vinyl. I are so for a geek right now. Uh, oh yeah, I know, right? Well, this is the first time we had anything on vinyl before, so yeah. We, we, it's always been a goal. So. So, so the beer one looked like brown, like beer. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's kind of it's kind of transparent, like clear. So it, it's cool. Um, Duck has one. I, I still haven't gotten my copy of of the record yet because well, they apparently they're stuck on a boat right now. The Bad Time Records, yeah, they're like trapped in a canal on a boat. So yeah, it sucks, but you know what can you do? They're, they just exist out there somewhere, but <laughs> At least they're on the boat. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Maybe they're not literally on the boat, uh, but I don't know. That's how I envision it. They're just stuck out there in a canal somewhere. But um, so I, I'm curious. What what what's your favorite song on the record? I like the one. I'm I'm not good in name, uh, but the first one really started up the thing. You know, you get okay. the. Record what you're gonna have but oh, yeah. the song with yeah. zach queen um is really it, it it get in your head and it's late in the record so 
you get all those crazy songs and then you get to it. And I think it, it really nailed the records. You know you're into something. Mm -hmm. um, one, two, four, five uh, are kind of my favorite. One, two, four, and five? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. the way I remember it. You know, yeah. I'm a DJ. No, no, no. Yeah, track titles. CD, it's always number. But uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, you know, when I've got physically the album, uh, I read more. So I, I, I've get an idea of yeah. the song. But when it's digital, I don't fucking remember the name. <laughs> No, I hear that, I, and, and I, especially when I listen to CDs in my car, I always remember it by the track title. But uh, no, if you like track five, that means you—that's that, my personal favorite, the Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one's my my that 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 was the one that really surprised me when I saw how it came out. I was like, okay, this is a really good. One. Um, yeah, because people have to figure it out. It's kind of a puzzle. It's in your head and. Mm -hmm. You got some, you know, ID, you start demoing, and then you get to the final rock and everything. But when you hear it at the end, it's kind of for us, it, it, it's the same for you and us when we hear the record. You're just like, oh, shit, it's, yeah. okay, yeah, it's out for that. And you're like, oh, fuck, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, a lot of the time, you know, I won't hear all of Duck's vocals until I'm in, until he's in the booth. And a lot of times, like, you know, like I remember hearing Detonate, the second song on the record. I remember hearing Detonate live, like as he was singing it. And I was like blown away. I was like, oh my God, it's so good. Because, <laughs> like, uh, well, the thing is, remember the name of the song. Yeah, well, the that's was written out. <laughs> And then I didn't realize that he was going to just sing the entire song. There's only one horn break. So I, I just thought he, I, th I thought the whole, the whole slow part with the, the, I guess you could call it the ska part. It's barely ska, but we'll call it the ska part. Um, I, I thought that was all going to be instrumental. And then when he comes in with that, that fight or flight line, I was just, yeah, I was, I was like, yes, hell yeah. That was another good example of just, as it was happening, you're like, okay, well, that was way better than I thought it was going to be, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's really impressive the way he dropped the vocal. Um, it's, uh, and, you know, the choice of word, because um, I, I love the lyrics. Um, when I listen to a song, I, I, I love to know what it's all about. And, you know, it, it just, like, it flow it. it. It seemed so easy. <laughs> Yeah, Duck. <laughs> I, I would be nothing without Duck. <laughs> uh, he, he's like a secret weapon, you know. He, his vocal melodies are insanely good. They're insanely clever and creative. And, you know, I can make a good instrumental, but his vocal melodies are what really make them shine, you know. Um, yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, and he seems like a character, and I love it, you know. Oh, oh yeah. He is, that is a way to describe him. <laughs> That's Maybe. what we need. When yeah. I said, you know, when I listen to music, because I listen to a lot, you know. I know people from my age, I'm almost 40, uh, listen to the same old thing. <laughs> yeah. It seems like after 30, the minds, uh, I don't believe that. You fall into that. It really is. I have officially broken out of that. And I like, and it feels great. But you, I, you definitely get into like, you just listen to the same old bands over and over again, you know, or you stop listening to music altogether and just start. I know a lot. Of, I, I listen to podcasts, so nothing against podcasts, but I, I know people who just like literally just don't even listen to music anymore. They just like only listen to podcasts, and, I, and that just depends on my mood of the day. But like, I am glad. Like, I'd say, like, three or four years ago, I started listening to new music again, and it was a very good decision. I encourage anyone to do that. Just find some new, like, find some new bands in the music that you already like. Yeah, because, you know, I don't know if it's about comfort or something, mm -hmm. but um, when you do that, it's like I felt 
that you always go forward in life. You know, it's always about, oh, I'm going to see hear new thing, watch new movie yeah. and, you know, read new books and everything. Not getting stuck in that circle. Yeah. Um, that it's so easy to get on. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I've always, like, I've always, with albums, like, associated certain albums to certain points in my life. And I think what got me back in was when I realized, like, uh, these albums are just, like, I, I, like, I can't even associate these to certain points in my life because I've just listened to them, like, throughout all these years now. I need to, like, make new memories with new albums. Like, and that's, like, what I was like, I'm going to just listen to a new record. And then, like, that started it. And um, the first album I got really into again was this band Oscar. Uh, that the, it was their second record. I love that album. Wow. Yeah, that album was super good. It is super good. I still listen to it, but like that was like the first one where I was like, all right, I'm listening to this every day. And wow. Then, and from there, I just started like, just all right, I'm going to listen to all the bands that I have just slept on. You know what I mean? And I just kind of like went, like, I just went for it. Yeah. That's Which crazy. honestly probably had this record. Now that I think I've never thought about it, but that probably helped with i can't take it anymore to be honest but just with songwriting because i saw them live <laughs> uh, oh oscar yeah i saw them with vision and melancholine and 10 football amazing. amazing that's awesome well my buddy was just my buddy was wearing a shirt of theirs and i was like who's that and they're like oh they're a really good punk band from uh, a pop punk band from the like or like like late nineties, early two thousands, and <laughs> crazy that he have a shirt. It's so yeah. rare, man. It's not yeah. a common thing. No, it's yeah. not everybody who know them. And and I feel like when he told me that, I was just so starved for new music. I was like, well, that I'm listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's cool. That's cool. That's the thing with the radio show. It's always get me to, you know, be aware of what's happening in the scene. So I'm constantly listening to new stuff. So it's pretty rare that I stuck in a record now um, for a long time. I've got a lot of records that I love. And, you know, sometimes it pop up in my, I have to listen to that record. But it can take months since I listen to it again. But, um, yeah, the, the, the album you release, it, it's, it just bring me back where, you know, I hear instant classic records. I was like, whoa, shit, it blew my mind. Because there's not much band that choose to play that fast car, you know. And it's not just car band. I'm yeah. always about car. You, you combine kind of um, a kind of punk rock raw with, you know, some horns and, you know, mm. bring a kind of chaos to all that with catchy, you know. Um, yeah. it, it's, it, and it's just instantly it got me in. So it's. I listened to it eight times, and it's pretty Dude. rare that I do it. So when I was booking the entry, I was like, "Man, I'm I'm hooked." <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, we're definitely a punk band, you know. Uh, we, but I would never deny ska. Like we are a ska band, you know. But I, I feel like, uh, well, <laughs> I feel like we kind of we kind of threw everybody for a loop with releasing parallelograms as our first single. Cause that that is the most ska song on the record. So like a lot of a lot of people who didn't know who we are and discovered us on that song, like didn't realize how not like we are not that much of a ska band, you know, where we're just like just ex like horns throughout the whole song, upstrokes throughout the whole song. You know, like there's like a good five or six songs on that record that doesn't have upstrokes at all. Um, like a good third of the record doesn't have any upstrokes. Um, but uh, yeah, we're definitely also a, an aggressive punk band. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but we, we've always loved changing gears. Like if you listen to any of our records, we've always had a hardcore punk song and then like a super poppy ska song. We've all, we just like, Doug, I remember when we first started this band, Duck was like, I like all the styles of ska. Like, let's like do a little bit of all of them. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. You know, because he came straight out of a ska core band, Detonate, which you should check out. If you haven't checked out Detonate and you like Joystick, 
I think their albums are on Bandcamp. They're not on Spotify or anything. But dude, if you want to hear more of Duck, go listen to Detonate. It's a little bit more aggressive, but it's so you good. You can send me the link for the Bandcamp if you find okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will play them. Yeah. I will play them. Totally worth checking out. I was a huge band. I, mean, I was a huge fan of that band before Joystick. Um, and that's what the second song is about. I mean, it's obviously called Detonate, which is pretty, pretty obvious. But um, I, that band, stupid good, stupid good. At the end of the interview, I will finally know every name of this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will have, if if I fail next time, you said, man, I, uh, I told you the name of each song during the interview, Eric. Yeah, you should yeah. learn them, goddammit. <laughs> You don't have to, as long as you listen to it. Uh, that's uh, that's all I need, you know. <laughs> I'm so Thanks. glad, so glad you 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 liked it. I really am. Uh, I, I, you know, like, I, you, I already play yeah. like um, I, I already I already played two songs. The first one and the one with Zach Queen, and uh, the reaction was amazing. I have great, you know, uh, like people were like, it's like. Back in the days where Lane KT and everything were like against yeah. authority, like really fast coughing, and and they re they were really stoked. Dude, that that is awesome. <laughs> Thank you for playing us. Yeah, um, I'm glad we have you know gotten ourselves out there a little bit more. And I mean, we're we're already writing new songs right now. Uh, Duck said we're taking like a month off and that month is coming right up, but we're going to start like start another batch of songs, you know, we're going to get into a room together and see what we can come up with. Um, not saying that a new record's coming anytime soon, but <laughs> we're just ready to keep working is what I'm saying. We're definitely not like slowing down. Um, it's weird to, to feel like we're at a high 12 years in, you know? Um, yeah, I would never have thought that we'd be hitting our stride at, at 12 years, <laughs> uh, but we, we've, we've grown up a lot. I, I would say like, I, I kind of split the band up in, into two, like there's the first six years and then there's like the second six years. We really became a serious band in 2015. Like, that was when we really started to kick it into high gear. That was when we started recording since seriously. So I consider that to be like joystick serious touring band era. And then the first six years was joystick party band era where we were just <laughs> it all the time. And yeah. So. Yeah. Cause that's the thing, you know, there are so many band out there now, so it's tough, you know, it, it, it's hard to make a living from that, but just like touring and everything, it's uh It's um, it's not easy. So, you know, you have to do it uh, intelligently. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you have to figure it out that if you're drunk every fucking night and spend all the money on, on booze and, and yeah. you know, other things, you just, you know, you cannot say at the end, oh, man, we're not getting any money. The scene is <laughs> fucking, it's just like, come on. You have yeah. To It's always a balance, you know. I met a lot of bands, you know, that tour, and when they have day off, you know, they party a little bit, and you know, it's just a balance of everything. Yeah, uh, we had a lot of fun in those years, but we were, yeah, we were all very drunk. Uh, Duck is <laughs> four and a half years, uh, four, a little over four years sober now, so he's killing it. And you know, that, that I think that's another huge reason why this record was was well done, you know. Um, his first sober record in a long time wow yeah. wow congratulations for him it's a uh, it's another tough thing to do but uh, it's so it's so rewarding at the end and you know the result is amazing so um you know people if you can uh, buy a merch and anything uh, go for it brush yourself uh, like you said There's a vinyl available on Stomp Records. And of course, if you can, just go check the song, listen to him, check them, share them, and go enjoy, uh, you know, those beautiful songs that you guys wrote. And uh, man, thank you so much. Seriously, I really had a blast talking to you. And yeah. I should warn you, you know, I'm an asshole. I should warn you about that. 
you're stuck in a false contract that you never sign that doesn't really exist and you come back as many times as you want guy it's your fucking yeah. show <laughs> yeah man i had a great time man thank you for all the kind words too uh i'm really glad you enjoyed it people seem to have been really enjoying it i'm very very relieved honestly you know so yes thank you for taking the time to listen to new music i know it's hard to do sometimes so thank you again it's a discipline i know a lot of people ask me when you got time i tell you the secret you know Normally, I don't have that amount of time, but since I'm working at home with that pandemic, mm -hmm. um, there's no one around me. I work in group entrance. Normally, I'm suit and tie. Yeah. So, home, I can listen to anything I want. So, I've got time to listen to like <laughs> eight records a day. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to go listen to that Mighty Mighty Boss Tones record for sure. Yeah. I, 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 their own style. You have to love the style, but. Um, if we take everything they did, it's uh, it's a really well, you know, retrospective of everything um, that worked for them over the course of their career. So it's uh, it's a great record. I mean, every songs are good, but um, you know, those ones that are good, you know, are fucking good. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll do that right when I get off of here because <laughs> I got nothing to do. I, I feel you. <laughs> you know what I'm doing? Uh, you know, normally uh, I work a lot on the radio show and everything. Today was a rush. I had four interviews. Your last. Wow. Yeah. 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 Two male bands, and I did one with um, with a German band uh, signed on a San Diego label called uh, Mannequin Vanity Records. Or Vanity Mankin Records. Mankin Vanity Records. They're, they're good. They're signing a band from France and they have a, a Quebec band signed there. Nice. Uh, in French, they're crazy. Nice. Uh, well, you're killing it because I am. This is probably my first actual interview before. I, I've done like a couple of like things here and there and uh, I was a little nervous because I'm all awkward and I'm bad at talking, but. You made it easy for me, so thank you. Oh, dude, man, yeah. you were awesome, seriously. And, you know, I get you. Uh, people think that I'm the most social guy in the world. I have a lot of anxiety problems, and I'm not the most social. Normally in life, you, know, I have mo those moments, you know, when I go to a show and I'm in that mood. But uh, normally I'm more, um, I'm a gamer and smoke weed and just like, I'm <laughs> more... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. So I feel you. Yeah. Um, seriously, thank you so much. We're going to keep uh, each other in touch. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to do the special in three weeks. And actually, I will have the Voodoo Gloss Call 2. So it's going to be a really interesting show. Shit, yeah. Oh, their record's coming out in like... Yeah. A... Oh, shit. Dude. Uh, May 26th. So records, dude. It's wild. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Chance to hear it. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Wait, you you heard it? Yeah, I heard it. Uh, Eddie sent it to me. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I really like the single. The single goes hard. So, yeah, I'm looking to I'm looking to check that one out too. Yeah. Yeah, they got Dead by Stereo singer. It is amazing. He got so much range. Um, and he can really change his vocal, you know, with the Dead by Stereo and, you know, with the Voodoo Gloss Call. And you really nailed the spirit of the band. So, yeah, it's a really <laughs> interesting record. Yeah, cool. Awesome. <laughs> You're going to have a lot to listen. <laughs> I know. It's great. I love it. <laughs> so, my friend, uh, again, thank you for your time. And I send all the details uh, when I heard the interview. It's not a podcast show. We're live in the studio. But we've got the podcast available right after. So make sure I send you um, the way to listen to it live and uh, the podcast after. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Have a good one, okay? Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>